Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Tool for Forza YouTube channel. Captain Nasty's here for episode two of Getting the Most Out of Your Fanatic DD Wheel. Uh, settings tutorial and a follow-up video to my, my first video, which is really uh, more centered around the uh, formula rim, uh, which you see here. This video is going to be really more for round rims, driving uh, vintage cars, um, things like that. And really just cars that have a higher degree of rotation as well and require a round rim. Uh, I'm going to be demonstrating both my low torque settings because unfortunately I don't have a round rim, um, you know, except for the Fnatic CSL which puts the wheel in low torque mode. I still get 9 newton meters of effect output, output which is enough probably for most people. So I'll show you the, um, the gain settings for that and then we'll talk also about what gain settings, you know, uh, you could run uh, in high torque as well, you know, if you wanted to achieve about 10 newton meters, which I think is probably about, you know, what most people are going to want to do for these round uh, you know, rims with higher degree of rotation. So that being said, I'm going to demonstrate on the wheel rim first. I'm going to do it on the Fnatic um, podium rim, but again, these are the settings for the round rim, but the, the screen's a lot easier to see on here. So let me go ahead and turn that camera on. And then uh, let's just dive, dive right in here. So I need to make one correction for my previous video, and that's regarding sensitivity. So the auto setting does not seem to actually work in a Seto Corsa. And um, if you, so I actually have to turn it so it reads the same on the wheel as it does in game. So that being said, for these cars with higher degree of rotation, uh, this is the Fnatic recommended setting here for AC, and it's what works well for me. Uh, degrees of rotation is 108 on the wheel. It's also set to 1080 in game. Uh, so that's an important, important change there from my last video. Force feedback. So again, with the low torque value, I run this uh, at 100. Uh, and if you're on a high torque, you would run this at 100 as well uh, and turn the gain down in-game. Or you could do a blend of like 50% gain in-game and 50% on the wheel, which is what Fnatic recommends. I can't tell the difference between those two settings, and that's, that's a debatable topic for sure. For shock vibration, I have that off. For ABS, I have that at 96, so that's the value that triggers your brake pedal to rumble. And uh, that's just where I like that's very, obviously all these settings are just personal preference, but that's where I like mine. For force... On Assetto Corsa, I run this at 110 in low torque mode. In high torque mode, you'd want to leave this on 100 in all the other titles I've tested. I like that at 100 as well. I've tried this on Wreckfest and Dirt Rally uh, as well and, and, let, and turn that down to 100. For spring, I have that as off. For n modern sim racing games, that doesn't really matter. For damper, I also have this as off. Uh, I actually talked to some people at Fnatic before making this, and they say that the damper um, setting on the DD wheels doesn't even really do all that much. They said it did do something, but not, but not that much, as, as much detail as they'd go into. Uh, for my natural damper, I have this right now set at, at 25, but you will definitely want to play with this. This is, in my opinion, the most important setting on these Fnatic uh, DD wheels. This controls how much, how quickly the wheel self-steers uh, with aligning torque and all that kind of stuff. So depending on the type of car, even, you, you might want to, you know, make a slight adjustment here uh, on the wheel, but I find 25 to 35 seems to be a pretty good sweet spot uh, for me. For the natural friction, uh, I run this at three on on these cars, and uh, it just didn't have enough weight at very low, you know, close to the center and, and at low steering angle. So I just wanted to get a little more weight out of it. So I increased that. If you increase this natural friction number up, it'll make the wheel just feel heavier as you put, you know, input to it. For brake force, I run this at high, and what that means is it requires, you know, um, what I'm going to call maximum pressure to, to hit 100% brakes, it gives you the most resolution out of your brake pedal, and if you want firm brakes, which is always, in my opinion, the goal here, then, then that's what you want that setting at. For FEI, I run this setting at 100 and everything. Think of this as smoothing. So as you turn this number down, your force feedback will get lower, but also the peaks uh, will get lower as well. It's, it's smoothing. I don't, you know, I, I, you want a direct drive wheel to feel direct, so, so I like BRF at 100. And uh, those are the on-wheel settings. Let me go ahead and uh, shut this camera back off here and let's go into AC. So what we're looking at here is just the access page. I'm going to go through this really quickly. So the key here, degrees is at 1080, do not check, invert, gamma 1, scale 100, auto adjust, scale to match car steering lock, make sure that is checked. Filter at 0, speed sensitivity at 0. Uh, for throttle, just 0, 100, no dead zone. Uh, for brakes, I like my gamma at one. Uh, you know, you might want to turn turn that up, but for me, I find that I can get it, keep it near the top, the easiest. You know, at a setting of one. And that's kind of how I tune that. For clutch, zero to one hundred. For handbrake, uh, I have a fifteen percent inside dead zone, so it goes from fifteen to one hundred, and that's because my Fnatic handbrake is a little bit 
wonky and tries to set itself off sometimes if I don't put a little dead zone in there. Let's go to force feedback. So for the low torque setting here, I run my gain in a set of Corsa at 85. And for most cars, uh, when you're on track, if you leave the, uh, this, this gain at 85 in game, you might have just a little bit of clipping. But again, within low torque, you're trying to make this thing produce, you know, as much as it power as, it's, it, as it can without excessive clipping. So I run this up at 85 and you're going to have a little bit of clipping, but you're going to also have a, a higher, you know, um, level of, of Newton meters coming out as well. Now on a high torque setting with a different, you know, like, proper round rim that lets us thing go in high torque, you definitely would want to turn the gain down from 85 if you're going to have it at 100 on the wheelbase. I'd recommend, you know, something like 35 to 40. Uh, do not check invert FFB unless you want to throw up. That's a fun one. Filter at zero, minimum force at three. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to turn these down in the beginning because we just want to feel the aligning torque and, and to make our force feedback adjustments and play with the wheel settings with as few variables as possible. We'll bring all these back in um, once you know, once we're actually kind of done messing with the aligning torque. Um, when I do have these enabled, I run curbs at 30, road at 15, slip effect at zero, and ABS effect at 15. I go into a little more detail on this in my previous video. I just don't want to, you know, repeat myself too much here in this one. For miscellaneous, uh, I do not like enhanced understeer effect. Check soft lock. Do not skip any FFB steps. For post-processing, do not enable that. And then for experimental, this is an important one for direct drive wheels. Check you know, unlock this, check gyroscopic. I run the damper at 100. I run the minimum damper at zero. And uh, those are those are my settings. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the round wheel and do some driving in-game and uh, make a few little, little tweaks and try to show you a little bit more about how this whole thing works. All right, guys, welcome to Goodwood Circuit uh, for our 250 GTO race car. And what we're looking at here is if you look in the right side of the screen, you're going to see a red line, and you'll start to see a green line move around uh, within that red line. That's the force feedback output from the game. Just next to that, uh, you'll see my pe pedal inputs, and uh, the bar on the, the far right is also real-time force feedback output. So just wanted to mention that before we get, we get going here. And uh, I'm going to do a lap here, just give her a go, and then we'll make a few adjustments to setting on wheel to demonstrate how those work. And how you can tune those to your liking. And again, this video is not, these are the best settings. This is me tr trying to, you know, teach a man to fish and give you guys information to make your own decisions on how you set up your force feedback. I do like having the graph, though, when I'm tuning this stuff. It definitely provides good data. And again, I don't have any of the bumps or curves or anything like that turned on. <laughs> the sliding is so rewarding in AC. So that put out 9.4 newton meters right there uh, with these settings on low torque, which I think is a probably really, it's probably about where I'll set it even on, on high torque. Um, well, I should say that's with this CSL, this small diameter wheel rim. So once I have a larger 15 inch wood grain wheel on here, I'm definitely going to be, you know, producing more than that because more newton meters uh, because of the you know, if you have a lot more leverage on a large wheel, it, you know, you need to have a stronger motor to provide the same kind of felt effect to the driver. So that's really one of the main attractions of a DD for me is being able to actually put on a big, huge wood grain vintage wheel like you'd see in this car and have it have good effect. Woo! These vintage cars are so fun to drive because you really kind of have to have these very small slip angle slides to make them turn they just tend to understeer if you're not sliding them just a little bit but you can feel it so well in AC and control the attitude of the car so nicely all right we'll do a bit of a more of a flyer here yeah, so you can see that my green graph on the right is getting close to the top of the red again because I'm in low torque mode. And I'm trying to make the game put out as much effect as possible with minimal clipping. If you were on a uh, high torque setting, you probably wouldn't have your gain set this high in a set, of course, so that green graph would not be even getting close to clipping if you had a value of like 35 or 40 or so. Uh, 
Uh, you can see it's pretty smooth. It feels good, but it's still fast enough where you can catch it. So, like I said, I think the natural damper is the most important setting on here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn that natural damper down to 10, which is what I run it on my previous video, and you're going to see how much harder this is. See how fast the wheel? It's like way faster than it would actually be in a vintage car like this. And it does, it, it feels like I'm holding on to an electric motor, which is not ideal if you're going for a realistic feel. Some people, you could argue it's easier to save the car like this because the wheel will self-steer quicker and return to center more quickly, but, you know, I'm really trying to have a, I guess, a balance between immersion, realism, and still being competitive, if that makes sense. There's some compromises to be made there for sure, but for me, I, you know, if you have a direct drive wheel because you think you're going to be, like, going any faster, you're, you're probably mistaken. These higher force feedback effects and more violent wheel definitely uh, does not make it easier to drive on, on sim games, but man, it makes it so much more fun. And I mean, let's be real, it's, that's why we're all here. I mean, it's still drivable like this. It's just, it feels like I'm holding on to an electric motor. And again, that's why this is all so subjective. I will say also, when I tested that setting in um, Wreckfest, I had to turn the damper up more to feel the dampening effects. I thought that was kind of interesting as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the damper back up to 25. And let's go over to friction. So I'm going to turn this up to like, I'll put it on 15 just to demonstrate. Again, this is not a recommended setting, but I, this is going to feel... Feels like heavy. Whoop. Get off the grass. Yeah, you kind of feel almost this like arbitrary weight to it, and it's not bad. I could totally see people wanting to run. Again, this this value higher as well. But for me. Yeah, like there, it's pretty heavy. Yeah, 9.7 Newton meters. And we'll go around the sweeper and kind of see. But again, it with the if you turn this up, you know, to like 50, it would be like a well. Let's go ahead and just do that. Why not? Let's be. Oh dear. My funky stick is a little funky, you could say, there. Oh, yeah, it feels... But even... Yeah, so I got nine Newton meters just going through that little chicane right there. So, to me, I, I think it feels... Just like I said, a little arbitrarily, just too too heavy, and it kind of just you lose just some of the maybe fidelity. Maybe that's too strong of a of a word, but yeah, nine point six right there. All right, let me go ahead and turn that back down. And that's really how I learned how this stuff works. I would just turn it up really high and turn other stuff down really low and and uh, and, and mess with it. And I think that's what it takes to um, you know to get your to get your FFB really dialed in uh, the way that you want it. So hopefully this has been this has been helpful. I really appreciate the support on the channel, and uh, come find us in Discord. 
uh, come and race. We're going to be setting up a dedicated set of Corsa server here uh, in the winter time. We race on Thursdays at 9 p.m. and uh, social sim racing community. We also race on Forza. Uh, I think we're going to start up another uh, dirt rally, a uh, one actual uh, Pikes Peak hot, leap hot lap challenge again as well. Thanks for checking out the channel. We'll see you guys soon. Captain Nasty's over and out.